God is love. Hello everyone. Before we continue, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome all of us on board and let us know that you are very much appreciated, you are very much valued and that you are not alone in whatever that you are going through. Whatever that is happening in your life at this juncture, I want you to know that this podcast is your friend and I want you to take your time, travel with us through the many facts that we shall uh, uh, embark on, on the word of God and establish, as we try to establish what God has for us in terms of our future and even in terms of our present. So I want you to feel very much at home and feel free to interact with us. Uh, just to remind us that this is our second podcast the first one we did is already available on social media platforms on youtube you will find it on ibm studios that is the channel that has our our podcasts the podcast uh, goes by the name the orange uh, the orange quench Um, and the aim is to quench that thirst of wanting to have answers you know asking god questions because uh, our god wants us to take him to task at his word because he does not make promises simply because of the fun of making promises our god is not man that he should lie when he says that i have good plans for you plans not to harm you but to bring you to prosperity he means it and he wants us to take him to task on that so the desire and the thirst for the word of god the desire and the thirst for encouragement that comes from god that is the purpose of the orange quench that we get to a point where we feel that indeed we can trust this god we can wait on this god so welcome on board and travel with us through all these topics that god shall bring uh onto us so ladies and gentlemen today i want to uh, begin a series that i've given the title god is love and the aim of this series is that at the end we get to a point to where we get to a point where we we we, we establish that if now this God is love, then what is the relationship between us and him? Or what should be the relationship between us and him? And in so doing, we are going to establish why are we even created in the first place? Why are we here? Because I know we have asked ourselves these questions more often than not, that why are we here? Because if we, if we, are, if we are to be born and live a life of, I don't know, sometimes you could think that you are living a life of misery. I want us to answer, why are we born? Why do we live lives that look like this? And then and eventually die right what is what, what is the plan of god about our lives does he really care uh, some some songwriter somewhere asked the question does jesus care does jesus care when i lose my child does jesus care when i lose my job does jesus care when i'm going through divorce does jesus care when my body is you know i have all these sicknesses in my body i have diabetes with me i have uh, aids with me i have all these infirmities i've had an accident my 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 my, my legs are going to be amputated does jesus care that uh, i've miscarried um, a pregnancy so all those we wish to get to a realization that god is love number one number two there is a purpose i know sometimes it's difficult to us to accept that yes there is a purpose so in so doing uh, in, in us going through this series, I wish us to, to get to that realization that yes, indeed, there is a purpose as to why things happen the way they happen. And find, foundationally, there is a purpose as to why we are alive, why we are created in his own likeness and in his own image. Very fast, let us go to the book of John. Uh, John, the chapter is 13, verse is 34. Remember, God is love. That's the topic that I wish us to, to, to look at in a series. Could be part two, part three, part four, in as much as God will lead us. Uh, John 13, verse 34, uh, I want us to, 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 to consider some words that Jesus is saying. I, the Bible reads, I am giving you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. So, you too are to love one another. Pause. You will notice that Jesus is giving his listeners a new commandment. And what is the commandment? Love one another. And how are you supposed to love one another? You are supposed to love one another just as I, Jesus, have loved you. At this point, I want to make this statement carefully that God cannot ask us to do something that he, number one, cannot do himself. And number two, that he has not already done. All right? Kwamba huyu mungu 
hawezi akatuamrisha tufanye jambo ambalo kwanza yeye hajalifanya ama pili yeye hawezi kulifanya if he says that love one another he has a point of reference because he has loved you so therefore love one another if he says keep my commandments is not saying it because he does not know what it means to keep his commandments because he himself in the manifestation of 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 Christ coming down to take a body of a human being in doing so he has kept the commandments so he cannot ask us to do something that he himself has not already done or he himself cannot do so when he says love one another just as i have loved you he is giving us direct from a point of reference that is legit very quickly to the book of john 3:16 how does it, the bible say for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son listen what is making god to give his only begotten son is because he loved the world in other words what is putting god in trouble <laughs> because he loved the world and who is the world you and i the verse finishes by saying that whosoever believeth in him whosoever it's not limited to to israelites to jews it is not limited to 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 sds only it is not limited to catholics it is not limited to 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 even muslims it is not limited to the worst of sinners that you can imagine it is not limited to you know those who look like they have made it in life it is open whosoever regardless of 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 who you are regardless of your history regardless of 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 what people think about you regardless of what you have achieved regardless of what you have not achieved if you therefore believe in this son jesus christ you are going to have everlasting life because that's how the verse finishes and says whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life salvation is there the promise of salvation is based on the principle of love because for god loved so for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that is the principle that love is the principle upon which salvation is best so when we come into the salvation what is jesus saying in john 3 in john 13 34 that now that you have come into this salvation i'm giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as i have loved you in other words because of this love i have given my life for you i have ensured that you have been saved therefore love one another in the same way that i have loved you remember there is nothing that we have done to deserve this love our existence up to this point it, up to the point where christ is coming and dying on the cross our existence was a condemned existence by virtue that we sinned in the garden of eden by virtue that man fell into sin the existence of man was a condemned existence because the wages of sin is what is death up to this point there's nothing good that man has done up to this point there's nothing good that you and i have done on the contrary our existence is just a condemnation for lack of a better way to put it but because of this love because of this christ on the cross is saying you have been given a second chance Therefore when you receive this salvation love one another just as I have loved you. So if Jesus loved you if Jesus loves us what does that tell you? It tells you that God also loves us. Remember for God so loved the world. So God is love. Let us establish that from 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 the book of 1 John Let us establish that from the book of 1 John chapter number 
And I wish us to look at verse 8 and listen to what God is saying. First uh, John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Remember, Jesus has just said, love one another just as I have loved you. Now, what is First John chapter 4, verse 7 saying? Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Listen to that. And everyone that loveth is born of God and he knoweth God. That's amazing. That let us love one another for God is, for, for, for love is of God. That this love that we are saying that we love one another, it is not of our own. It is of God. Pause. Part two of that. And everyone that loveth is born of God. What does that tell you? Everyone that is born in the salvation is of God. Because God is love. And he knoweth God. Verse 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Listen. Yule ambaye hapendi. Basi nae hamujui mungu. Kwa sababu mungu ni upe. Mungu ni upendo. God is love. That's amazing. That the whole system of us belonging to God is based on the principle of love. And brothers and sisters, I want you to take time and realize that this love I'm talking about is not based on feelings. This is a love that is out of choice. By the time Adam and Eve are committing sin in the Garden of Eden, God had a choice. You know, sometimes we, we, we tend to think that because of this love, the hands of God are tied, you know? That now, because he loves us so much, his hands are tied. No. Let us get that out of our heads. In the garden of heaven, God's hands were not tied. He could have destroyed sin there and then. And in so doing, by destroying sin there and then, he would have destroyed Adam and Eve there and then. Now your story is here. Let us rewind. Let us rewind. And see how God is now. Let us rewind. You know, we want to see how God is love and how we get to the point where he's saying now, love one another because I have loved you. Let us rewind and go back to heaven when, 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 when Lucifer is when Lucifer is, is falling into sin. You know, more often than not, we ask ourselves the question and we are like, why is it that God allowed Lucifer to live? Why is he even alive now? You know? And then again, why put this same evil being in the same place where his beloved human beings exist? Bona to share space, you know? Brothers and sisters, think about this because the foundational question that the devil accuses God with is that God does not love us. In heaven, the devil had an issue with Christ. Even today, he has an issue with Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The devil has an issue with him. And in so doing, he has so many accusations that he brings, that he brought in the beginning, that he still brings. And one of these foundational questions is, or one of these foundational arguments is, that God does not love us in heaven. Remember, he's preaching to the angels and telling them that, hey, you guys, you are serving a God who is a tyrant, you're serving a God who is selfish. You're serving a God who's controlling. That you do not have a power of choice. Remember I said love is a choice. And God, in his amazing wisdom, he allows the devil to exist so that these angels who have been 
preached to that they are operating on a system that is not of freedom, number one, on a system that is uh, 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 control, controlled by a being who does not care about them, on a system that is, you know, robotic, I can put it robotic, God allows the devil to exist so that these angels can have a glimpse of the other side. Not that up to this point the angels didn't have a, a power of choice. They, they had a power of choice. They still have a power of choice. But God allows the devil to continue and exist so that now again, because they have a power of choice, now you can see the other side. And then now you choose which side you want to, 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 to serve. And that's why you find that when the angel, when the devil is being thrown from heaven, a third of the angels come down with him because a third believed in what the the, 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 the the devil was saying. And those who remained in heaven will not want to share in that uh, in that system. They, 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 they actually get to a point to realize like, wait, kumbe kuna upande mwingine wa history. Kumbe, there is something known as sin, and they do not want to be a part of it at all, at all. The moment they saw the devil come down from heaven, the moment they saw the devil lose his glory, the moment they saw a third of the angels come down with him into this world, they did not want anything to do with sin. And remember in the book of Revelation, God says, those that I love, I punish. Those that I love, I remind. So these angels were given the opportunity to fasten and hold on to the love of God even more than before. Why? Because of sin. Fast forward into the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve are falling into sin, the angels of heaven were very, very much, you know, in shock. Because remember, before, before Satan fell, he was given time. Before we get to the point where uh, uh, Michael and his angels are fighting the devil and his uh, followers, by the time we are getting to this point, it had taken a lot of time. And this time was spent on the devil being given opportunities to abandon his campaign. Please stop this. Please stop this. God took time to speak to him. The angels took time to speak to him. Even Christ took time to speak to him. But... He was persistent in his in his campaign. Up to the point where he's now saying, enough is enough. Even when we get to the Garden of Eden, before Adam and Eve sinned, it took time. God was conversing with them. The angels were visiting them day in, day out in the Garden of Eden, reminding them and teaching them who the devil is, where he is, how he operates, what he wants. You know, they, they were told all these things. And then God says, of every tree in this garden you shall consume. But that tree in the middle, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not take. For the day you do so, you shall surely die. So when the devil tempts Eve, and Eve falls into that temptation, and he breaks the command that God gave, it is a sad moment for heaven. It is a sad moment for the angels. It is a sad moment for the Godhead. So then, what do we do with the man who is in our own image and likeness? And before I continue, I also want to make a statement and say that there's nothing that takes God by surprise. 
God already knows that this is going to happen. All right? Let me repeat that. There's nothing that takes God by surprise. God already knows what is going to happen. Even by the time he is creating Adam and Eve, he knows that this is going to happen in the Garden of Eden. And then you can pause and ask yourself, why then proceed to create man? Why then proceed to have him in the Garden of Eden? And yet he knew that he's going to fall into sin, which is a valid question. And when you listen to that question, it, 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 it is more like, why then create us? Why are we here? In other words, brothers and sisters, when God looks at your life, whether you are a believer or not, he knows your end. There's nothing that takes him by surprise. So when he looks at your life and he sees that in the future, one, or one year, two years, three years, whatever time that you exist, that you are never going to change your ways, that you are going to keep in sin. He does not, there's nothing that will take him by surprise. All right? And him, him allowing you to exist is because he has a plan. We shall talk about that in depth as we proceed. So let's go back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve fall into sin, it, it, it did not take God by surprise. You know, when God is coming to the Garden and asking Adam, Adam, where are you? And Adam is responding and saying that I heard your footsteps in the Garden and I hid myself for I was naked. And God asks him, who told you that you were naked? Have you taken of the fruit that I told you not to? Adam responds and says that it is the woman that you, you gave me. These are events that are not taking God by surprise. God already knew this. So then, why allow Adam and Eve to continue existing? Pause. Rewind. Why is the devil accusing God in heaven? And what was the principle of his accusation? Remember, he had accused God that he's a tyrant, that he's a selfish God, he's a controlling God, that he is not a God of love. All right? And remember I said, love is a choice. It's a choice. That God chose to love us. Not because of anything good we did, no. But because that is, that is the character of God. So the devil is striking at the character of God in heaven. Now fast forward. Why then is God allowing Adam and Eve to continue living in as much as they have sinned? Remember, he told them that the day you shall take of that fruit, you shall surely die. All right? Why then? You will discover from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 7, verse 8, that God is love in this sense. The character of who he is, and that is love, is a character that he wishes every existing being in the universe to, number one, appreciate. Number two, to witness. Number three, to enjoy. Ah. That he's a God who wants us to glorify him all the days of our lives. Because the Bible tells me, in everything that you do, do it unto the glory of who? Of God. That in so doing, he wants this love that is his character to be manifested in us, in the lifestyle that we live, in the blessings that he bestowed upon us, in, the, in everything that we do. As we do it unto the glory of God, his love is manifested in a major way. 
Why? For a witness for everyone existing in the universe. Not on earth alone, my brothers and sisters. So, Adam and Eve are allowed to live. All right? And God comes down and, 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 and in that moment that they have sinned, heaven is watching. The heavenly hosts are silent because God is walking in the Garden of Eden. Kumetulia. All right? Because the angels had seen what God had done with the devil. They had seen God has thrown the devil down from heaven. And that was a bad... <coughs> Sorry. It was not a good feeling. It was not a good experience. It was a sad moment. Fast forward. Adam and Eve have sinned. The angels are approaching yet another sad moment. Silence as God is walking in the Garden of Eden. Silence as God is coming to the point where Adam and Eve were made feature. Silence. And God calls out, Adam, Adam, where are you? I don't know. I don't know what the angels might have expected. I don't know even what the devil might have expected. I think they did not expect God to call Adam and ask for an explanation. They didn't. Even the devil was shocked because the devil had accused God of being a tyrant. You know, the nature of a tyrant is, I tell you to do this, you don't do that. I come to see you, I'm coming to destroy you. But at that moment, as God walks into the garden, as he calls out, he calls out with a voice that is a fatherly voice, a voice that is embedded with emotion, a voice that is embedded with understanding, a voice that is reminding us of the book of Isaiah, where he says, come now, let us reason together. That's the voice that Adam had in the Garden of Eden. A voice that made him to, to explain his situation. He says, I heard your voice and I had to hide myself. And that's the nature of human beings. The moment we fall into sin, we do not want to come to God. We want to hide. We want to sort ourselves out. But we forget that he's calling with Love and saying, my son, my daughter, where are you? So when God calls out to Adam, and Adam explains himself and says, I heard your voice and I had to hide myself for I am naked. God does not stop there. He continues, who told you that you are naked? What have you done, my son? Adam says, it's the wife that you gave me. The wife says, it's the serpent. So they are blaming God for their situation. Because who created the woman? It is God. Who created the serpent? It is God. But God in his amazing love, he does something that heaven is shocked at another time. This sad moment that the angels are witnessing is going to be heavy in their hearts. It's going to be heavy in the entire generations that are coming. Listen to this. God slays a lamb in the garden of Eden for the first time. They had not seen this before. They had not seen death before. They had not experienced the pain of an animal crying as it dies, let alone a human being. God takes the skin of this animal and he clothes them. Blood is shed in the Garden of Eden, something that no one up to that point had experienced before. The angels realize the intensity of sin. At the same time, they realize the intensity of the love of God. 
And this is a lifestyle that the Adam and Eve are now going to have to, to live with. This is a reality that they are going to have to, 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 to battle with all the days of their lives. Wanavalishwa ngozi ya mnyamu. Na wanatolewa katika shamba la edeni. And they are told now from today, from your sweat, you shall eat. And the woman, you shall give birth in a lot of pain. Up to this point, they had not known pain. Up to this point, they had not known what it meant to sweat in order to eat. They had not known what it meant to till the land. It was a life of pain that was ahead of them. The angels pause and try to internalize what is really going on. They come to the realization that now man is going to experience feelings of pain. Man is going to experience feelings of being tired. The angels do not understand this. Fast forward, Cain and Abel. Cain kills his brother because of jealousy. The angels do not realize that now man is going to feel jealous. Man is going to feel angry. Man is going to die because Cain kills Abel. Man is going to lie. Brothers and sisters, these are experiences that are only found in the human race. Why? Because of sin. And why are we existing then? The moment we overcome sin, I want to stop here so that we have another uh, episode where we pick it up from here. The moment we overcome sin, brothers and sisters, we prove that the love of God works. Ah, I don't know. This is amazing. The moment that we come out of this sinful nature of ours, the moment that we heed to the call of Christ calling on the cross, that my brother, where are you? My son, where are you? My daughter, where are you? I have died for you. The moment you accept Remember he said for God loved for for God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him the moment you believe in the son the moment you accept the love that God has for you the moment you say yes Christ save me it is a proof that the love of God works And it is a proof that the devil is a liar. So as I wrap up this first episode of the series, God is Love, I want to call upon you to think about these things. Okay? Whatever you feel that you have a question, whatever you feel that I didn't put it well, whatever you feel that you need further explanation, think about it. Do your research. DM me because our DMs are open. Let us discuss further. Eventually, I want to invite you to make a decision for Christ today. Okay? You listen to all, you listen to the history of humankind. You look at the life that we live. You look at the existence that we, we exist in. You look at where the world is today. Where we have come from. More often than not, there's nothing good. There's nothing good. Akuna? Yeah? Governments come in power and we think that life is going to be better. But a few months down the line, you discover that, no, things are worse. What happens is now us to adjust to the times and seasons that we are in, to survive. Survival, you know. 
And now we are talking about a God who is love. And I'm saying love is a choice. Brothers and sisters, in the next episode, you will discover that where God has mentioned love, the word commandment is not so far away from there. We're going to establish why should the commandment be tied to love. But before we get to that point, this God of love, he wants us to love him out of choice. He's not going to force you. doesn't matter the situation, the way it looks. He has allowed those situations to happen so that you and I can come to the realization that he is a God of love and make the choice to serve him and make the choice for him. It's not going to force you. You look at Adam and Eve, if God could have destroyed them at that time, at that point, then he could have forced them to take a fate. All right? Whether to save or to destroy, he could have forced them to a, a side. But he didn't. He allowed them to live and told them, you are free. I am a God of love. The moment you learn my character, if that character is impressed upon your mind, you make a decision that Christ is your Savior. So brothers and sisters, as I stop here, I want to welcome you unto this Christ. He is ever waiting for you. He is ever calling out for you. And you know, as we move forward in the next series, you will notice that this story has a time limit. Very soon, Imambo Itaisha, very soon. Imambo Ikisha, very soon. Then we shall come to an amazing rest where we will confess that God is a just God, that God is a fair God, that God is a God of love, that he himself is love. So welcome to this Christ that I'm talking about and make a decision for him. If not today, please make it a point that by the end of this series, you're making a decision for Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, what in heaven, we want to thank you and adore you. You have spoken to us in a special way. You have reminded us of what it means to be loved by you. We are still yet to learn more. But at this juncture, Father, I wish to invite you that into our hearts you may dwell with us, that you may uproot every doubt, that you may do away with every sin, O oh Father. That as we think about these words, as we wish that these words be an experience unto our lives, O oh Lord, your will be done. I want to pray for this listener who has taken time to listen. Wherever he is or wherever she is, Father, your hand is not short that it cannot reach them. Wherever they are, may your presence be felt in their lives. May you forgive them their sins and their trespasses, O oh Lord, and above all, May your will be done in their lives. If it is salvation into this Christ that they wish to have, Lord, may you work your agencies for the sake of their salvation. If it is healing, if it is blessing of family, if it is blessing of finances, if it is blessing of their jobs, if it is blessing whatever it is that they bring unto your feet every day, Father, may you hear them and may you respond according to your will and in the fullness of your time. Your blessings be upon us. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. We meet again next time and we continue talking about God and how he is love. May God bless you.